In this Double One Game Creator video tutorial series, we'll be looking at the many different types of resources that make up your games, providing a step-by-step -step breakdown on what each of them does and how they can be used to bring your games to life. In this fourth part, we'll be continuing our look at tile sets, learning how to create animated tiles, ramps, and custom collisions, as well as learning how the tile set extractor and tile terraformation tools work. One way of making your maps livelier is to add animated tile sets. These are tiles that play a sequential set of graphics at a set interval. With the tile set editor open, click on the ocean tile set from inside the lower object folder to the left. This tile set features several animated tiles that we can use for reference. The first thing you'll notice is that every frame used in an animated tile set is present within the tile set. When selecting an animated tile, the frame order and playback speed will update in the animation timeline directly above the tile set. We're going to use this animation timeline to create an animated water tile. To do this, create a new tile set by clicking on the add resource button in the top left of the tile set editor. Then give your tile set an appropriate name and make sure that the ground layer is selected. Next, left click the editable selection box to the left and select replace from the drop down menu. Then double click waterripple1.png from the ground water folder. Now select the tile directly besides it and do the same thing again, only this time selecting waterripple2.png. Repeat this once more for waterripple3.png so that all of the water tiles are present within your tile set. To turn this into an animated tile, select the first tile and then tick the edit checkbox besides the animation timeline. Then simply left click on your second tile, followed by your third tile, to see them added to the animation timeline. Once finished, make sure to untick the edit checkbox to stop adding new frames to your animation. If you accidentally add a frame you didn't mean to, simply right click it in the animation timeline to remove it. A preview of your animation will automatically play in the editable selection box to the left. You can adjust the speed at which this plays at by adjusting the frame speed directly beneath the edit checkbox. Set the frame speed to 0.75 to slow down the speed of the water. And that's it. Once saved, your new animated tile set should appear inside the tile set picker in the map editor. You can then select your animated water tile and begin painting it on your map using the drawing tools to the right. Now let's move on to ramps and custom collisions. While making lower object tile sets, there may be times when you need more advanced collision options. For example, you may want to create a stairs tile that increases the actor's Z position when walked on. This can be achieved with a ramp collision. Actors will automatically walk up slope collisions so long as they aren't too steep. To create a stairs tile set, first create a new lower object tile set by clicking on the add resource button in the top left of the tile set editor. Then give your new tile set an appropriate name. Set the layer to lower object and the tile shape to against wall. Next, left click the editable selection box and select replace from the drop down menu. Then double click stairs.png from the lower objects folder. To create a ramp collision, click on the edit button besides the collision drop down menu to open the collision editor. We're going to create a ramp that will allow an actor to ascend a single tile high wall. You may have noticed that the collision editor looks very similar to the sprite sequence editor, and functionally, they are, just with fewer options. In the top left are four collision shapes you can choose from. Rectangle, polygonal, sphere, and mesh. For our ramp, we'll be using the polygon collision shape. Select the polygon collision button, and then click the side tab to change the viewpoint. The tile will not be visible from this angle, but it will make it easier to set up the ramp collision correctly. You can also use the scroll wheel on your mouse to zoom in and out to further assist you. By default, a rectangle collision will already be present, but before we remove it, we can actually use it as a guide to help us line everything up correctly. With the polygon collision button selected, left click inside the rectangle collision three times to create three distinct points. Then click and drag on each of these points to reposition them so that an upward slope is created. 
Once finished, right-click Rectangle Collision 1 from the list to the left and select Delete from the drop-down menu. If we click on the 3D tab, we can see that our ramp isn't quite in the right place, nor is it the right size. To fix this, click and drag on one of the corner points to resize it so that it fits within a single 32 by 32 pixel square. Then click and drag inside the collision shape to move it in front of our stairs tile. To see things from a better angle, hold down the middle mouse button to pan around the collision editor and hold down the Alt key whilst panning to change the 3D angle. Once finished, close the collision editor and save your tile set. Now when you place your stairs tile besides a one tile tall wall and test your game, your player character will be able to walk up the slope onto the roof. The last two things we want to cover in this video tutorial are the tile set extractor and tile terraformation tools. The former allows you to effortlessly add tiles from a sprite sheet, while the latter allows you to create transitions between different tiles without needing to place down each tile manually. Let's start by taking a look at the tileset extractor. When importing tileset graphics, it's not uncommon for an artist to provide a sprite sheet containing multiple tiles at once. You may also be trying to import tiles that are too small or too large. This is where the tileset extractor comes in. To open the tileset extractor, select any one of your tilesets and click on an empty tile where you want to insert a graphic into. Then click on the tileset extractor button in the top right of the window. Now click on the source image box and select insert from the drop-down menu. Then double click textures.png from inside the tileset extractor folder. In this example, we're using a sprite sheet that has large 128 by 128 pixel tiles, which are much too big for our tileset. Fortunately, we can effortlessly change this by setting the tile scale option to 128. This will automatically resize the graphic to fit within our 32 by 32 pixel tile set. To insert a tile into your tile set, simply click on a tile from inside the tile set extractor. If we go back to the tile set editor, we can see it has been inserted into the empty tile we originally selected. To insert all of the tiles at once, click and drag within the tile set to highlight a 6 by 6 square area and then return to the tile set extractor and click on the tile in the top left. Once finished, you can close the tileset extractor and save your tileset. The final thing we're going to look at in this video tutorial is tile terraformation. This feature is available for both ground tiles and wall tiles. To set up a terraformation graphic, we'll first start by inserting a new tile in the ground tileset we're already in. Select an empty tile in your tileset, left click on the editable selection box and select replace from the drop down menu. Then double click template tile onepng from inside the terraformation template folder. Now click on the change amount button inside the terraformation graphics section to the left and set the amount to one. This is how many terraformation graphics this tile will have. For each transition, you will need to create a new terraformation graphic. You'll notice that a small square has appeared beneath the change amount button. Click on it to open the tile terraformation window. This window can be a little daunting at first, so let's break down what everything does. Each of the squares under concave and convex will contain images that make up each edge and transition in your terraformation. Concave represents the outer edges and corners, while convex represents the inner corners. There are also four different styles you can choose from. Absolute provides the best performance and functions similarly to overlay inside, except it isn't overlaid. Overlay inside overlays the terraformation on the tile it's placed on. Overlay outside provides the worst performance and overlays the terraformation on up to eight tiles around the tile it's placed on. Finally, ignore forces the tile to ignore terraformation for instances where you don't want terraformation to occur, like brick walls by water tiles, for example. For tiles that contain both concave and convex graphics, like ground tiles, you'll typically use the absolute style. For tiles that contain a concave graphic, but not a convex graphic, like wall tiles, you'll typically use the overlay inside style. Before we break down what each of these squares represent, let's first fill them in so that we can get a better understanding of what's going on. 
left click the large square under concave and select replace from the drop down menu. Then double click template concave.png. Do the same for the large square under convex, making sure to double click template convex.png instead. This will automatically fill in all of the other squares inside the tile terraformation window. The nine squares underneath concave represent the outer edges of your terraformation. Starting from the top left, we have the top left, top middle, and top right of the terraformation. This is followed by the middle left, default tile, and middle right of the terraformation. The default tile is what is placed on your map when there's no terraformation required and is comprised of the top left, top right, bottom left, and bottom right's outer corners. The remaining three squares are for the bottom left, bottom middle, and bottom right of the terraformation. The square underneath the large square we just inserted our graphic into is a simplified copy of the square above, which only utilizes the corner pieces. This is also true for the convex side as well. Moving on to the convex side, the five squares at the top represent the top left, top right, middle, which is comprised of the four corner pieces, bottom left, and bottom right intersection of a neighboring tile. This may be a lot to take in all at once, but the template we just inserted will help to visualize how this all works. You can use the preview window to the right to paint tiles to see how the terraformation behaves, depending on which tile it's adjacent to. You can also right click within the preview window to delete tiles. Lastly, you can set an optional neighboring tile, which allows this terraformation to only be used when positioned next to a specific tile. This is useful if you want different transitions between different tiles, such as dirt next to sand or dirt next to water. Now let's take a look at a wall terraformation. The process is similar, except we don't need a convex graphic, and we don't set a neighboring tile. We also have to make sure that the style is set to overlay inside, instead of absolute. If we don't do this, then there will be portions of the tile missing, as we aren't using a convex graphic. Select the walls tile set that we created in the previous tutorial. Select the brick wall tile, and click on the change amount button. Set the value to 1 and press OK. Then click on the square underneath to open the tile set terraformation window. Set the style to overlay inside, and then click inside the large square under concave and select replace from the drop down menu. Double click brick wall concave.png from the walls and roofs folder to insert the graphic. We also need to make sure that we set up a terraformation for our roof tile as well. To do this, Close the tile terraformation window and open your roof's tile set that we created in the previous tutorial. Select the brick roof tile and click on the change amount button. Set the value to 1 and press OK. Then click on the square underneath to open the tile terraformation window. Unlike our wall terraformation, our roof terraformation will make use of both concave and convex graphics, so leave the style as absolute. Then click inside the large square under concave and select replace from the drop down menu. Double click brickroofconcave.png to insert the graphic and then do the same for the convex graphic, except this time double clicking brickroofconvex.png instead. We don't have a neighboring tile, so we can leave it blank. Once finished, close the tile terraformation window and save your tile sets. You can then select your wall tile from the tile set picker in the map editor and paint your new terraformed walls on your map using the drawing tools to the right. This concludes the fourth part of our video tutorial series detailing the different types of resources used in Double One Game Creator. In the next part, we'll be taking a look at actors, learning how to create dynamic objects and basic NPCs, as well as learning how the built in artificial intelligence works.